Welcome back to the Engineerable channel. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the 6-inch Aculoc machine vise that was sent to me for review from Vivor. And specifically, I requested this vise to use as a base for a really cool soft jaw design that can adapt to any shape and grab on to anything using this Kurt clone vise as a base for the jaws. So let's open this up and check it out. But first I'm going to do a review of this vise, see how strongly it clamps, see how the jaws stay parallel. I'm also going to tear it down to see what's inside and how it's made. And I'm going to be comparing it to some other vices that I have, some CNC machine vices, like these Girardi vices, which I really love and they're awesome and super nice. And I'm also eventually going to compare it to a Kurt vise. And I have some other clone Kurt vices that I can uh, compare it to, to see if the Vivor quality holds up. So let's check out what's in the box. So pretty well packaged. You can see that the jaw is definitely pushed up in the cardboard over here. There's not much packaging on this top side and it's totally squished the cardboard. It would be better if there's a little bit more padding on this top side. So we have the wrench handle, pretty loosey goosey. There's some hold down bolts, comes with two hold down bolts, two nuts. All right, the base has a good thick padding to it, so it's just the top that wasn't very well padded. Taking a look at the underside of this vise, they didn't really oil it well enough. There's already some rust on the bottom. They should have put some more oil on there. Looks like a ground surface on the bottom. These pieces right here are the alignment pieces for the bottom, but they're not the American standard of the slots. They don't fit in my Haas TM1 slots. So I'd have to machine them down to size to be able to fit in those slots. The width of the Haas TM1 slots, which is pretty much the standard for most American tool machines and most machines, is 5 eighths of an inch or 0.625 inches. These pieces, you can see, are quite a bit wider. They're measuring 0 0.702, 17.82 millimeters, 17.82. So it doesn't fit within here unless you machine it. It does have these arcs underneath because this can be bolted down to a rotary mount for the vise to be turned. Those alignment pieces can go here and here or here and here. So the actual width of the head of this vise is 5.95 inches. This is 5.95 inches also, pretty much 151 millimeters. The jaws measure 162 millimeters in width, 15.8 millimeters in depth, 45 millimeters in height. How far can this vice jaws open? 177.88 millimeters or 7.0 inches. So one weird thing with these T-bolts that they included is that there's no washer on top to go in this groove, so these nuts will just fall in there. So I need to find a washer to put on top there. I have to slide these nuts into the slots. Luckily, I found some big washers I can use with these T-bolts. So that's missing from the kit. Now that the vise is dialed in to be parallel with the table, by moving the dial indicator back and forth, I can see that the flatness of the jaws is within 0 0.01 millimeters. So as I move the dial indicator across the jaws of the vise, it only changes by 0 0.01 millimeters. In the center, it's a little bit 0 0.01 millimeters closer. That is a really small amount. If I move the dial indicator up and down the jaws from bottom all the way to the top, the top leans in about 0 0.05 millimeters more than the bottom. I think that's fine because if the top leans in a little bit, then when pressure is applied, it's going to straighten out. Now we're going to move the dial indicator across the moving jaw. And that changed by about 0 0.08 millimeters. And if I try to move it back and forth, I can only move it by about 0 0.04 millimeters. So there's very little play in those moving jaws. And now when I bias the moving jaws to another direction, it only varied by about 0 0.03 millimeters across the face there. Now I'm going to test the clamping force using this Haas vice clamp gauge. It goes up to 5,000 pounds. So we're going to put it in here. 
and see how much force we can apply just with this handle. You know, a reasonable amount of force. I don't want to like go crazy with it, but like something you might tighten up to. So, you know, 3,000 pounds, I'm pushing pretty hard. I probably wouldn't be pushing that hard most of the time. Um, let's see, most of the time, I'd probably clamp it to about 2,000 pounds, is what I feel like I would clamp something to. So, about 2,000 pounds right there. Let's see what that means in terms of the input torque and how that compares with the other vise. So this handle is about the same length as the stock handle, and I've got a torque gauge here, so I can see how much torque I'm putting in there. So at 500 pounds, we're at 10.7 foot-pounds. At 1,000 pounds, we're at 16.8 foot-pounds. 1,500 pounds, 25.2 foot-pounds. 2,000 pounds, 32.5 foot-pounds. 2,500 pounds, 40.6 foot-pounds. 3,000 pounds, 49.1 foot-pounds. So applying anything greater than 3,000 pounds is really going to require a longer wrench because it's just not comfortable to apply more force than that with this wrench. For comparison, let's see how much force this Girardi vise can apply comparing it to the input torque. So at 500 pounds, it's about 6.2 foot-pounds of input. At 1,000 pounds, about 9.5 foot-pounds. 1,500 pounds, 14 foot-pounds. 2,000 pounds, 18.4 foot-pounds, 2,500 pounds, 23 foot-pounds, and 3,000 pounds is 27.3 foot-pounds. So even though the thread pitch on this Girardi vise is bigger than on the Vivor vise, it takes a lot less input torque to apply the same amount of output force of the vise. And in fact, like, I am totally comfortable applying even more force, easily up to 4,000 and 4,500 pounds compared to the other one. I did not feel comfortable pushing on it that hard on the other one. For this one, yeah, easily go to 4,000 pounds. So another test I want to look at is when you're using very tall parallels and you're grabbing a piece only near the top, does the piece end up lifting off the parallels when you're clamping it? So I'm going to make sure to apply a decent amount of force downwards as I'm clamping it. And I'm applying probably about that 2,000 pounds of pressure. And the answer is that the stationary jaw parallel is loose, but it's not very loose, it's just a little bit loose. I can't even lift up and down to feel any slop. The moving jaw parallel is also loose. So let me just try this again, just to make sure I did it right. So it's down. So both parallels are loose. See I'm able to move the parallel out. Okay, so I'm going to measure how much the piece raises when the vise is being tightened. So right now we're at zero, and then as I tighten it, you can see that it raised 0 0.03 millimeters. And the more I tighten it, it raises more. So there it's up to 0 0.05 millimeters. This is being measured at the back at the stationary jaws. So when I tighten it up to about you know, 2,500 pounds or so of force, that's when it reaches 0 0.05 millimeters. Okay, so now I've moved it so it's measuring at the front jaws, and it's loose now, and I'm going to tighten it up. So here, there's a lot more play. If I get to like the, you know, 2,500, 3,000 pounds of force, it's gone up by 0 0.1 millimeters. So there's about twice the amount of lift in the front as there is in the rear. Both parallels do slide side to side easily. So the jaws aren't pulling the piece down when it's getting clamped. It's still secure in there, of course, but it does lift a tiny bit. Again, I don't notice any play vertically in the parallels, but it's enough that they can slide in and out. And that's as opposed to this style vise, which I'm used to using, which has jaws that you can loosen up a little bit. The jaws are on this angle such that when you tighten the vise, the jaws slide down a little bit and pull down on the piece against the parallels. And this vise does a really good job of sucking the piece down and clamping it on those parallels and you can't move the parallels. Okay, so the last thing I wanted to check here on this vise is how hard are the replaceable jaws, the jaw supports, and the base. So by using this hardness tester file set, 
I was able to determine that the replaceable jaws are about HRC 50 hardness. These top blocks here are hardened to about HRC 40 and the base is definitely below HRC 40 because the HRC 40 file will easily scratch this and dig into it. However, it's probably still between HRC 30 and 35 or so, I imagine. Is it really fair to compare a $1,000 to $1,200 vise to a $150 vise? And not really. So this is a pretty decent vise. It's a lot of steel for the money. For the home machinist, it's gonna be awesome. You know, it's gonna be a great vise. As long as the casting doesn't break or something, you know, it's pretty darn thick, pretty heavy vise. It looks fairly well made. The unfinished cast surface is definitely much rougher than the other Kurt clone vices I've seen. This drain area right here, it has flash and it's not gonna drain properly unless that was ground down and removed versus this side is clean and this side's gonna drain properly. But you can see that this casting, it's pretty rough but all the important surfaces are ground, smooth, and flat, and um, everything else seems pretty okay. So as I said, ultimately, the purpose of that Vivor vise is to provide an inexpensive base for these DIY vise jaws that can adapt to any shape and also support the shape without the use of parallels. So you can clamp onto weird shapes like this bike pedal, for example. You can easily clamp onto a circle. You could clamp onto a golf club if you wanted. Or you could clamp on this caster wheel if you needed to. The uses of these jaws are unlimited. And I'm going to be posting another video of how to build these jaws to attach onto a Kurt clone vise like the AccuVise that's sold by Vivor. So make sure you stay tuned for that upcoming video.